I just wanted to remind people that this is just an introduction. This is an overview. This is we're going to be talking about what we're going to be doing over the course of the five-week class, which is going to begin two weeks from today. Is that correct, Craig? Starting on April 20th. So this is just an overview. We're not actually building anything. We're going to talk about what we'll be building. PSD to HTML or Photoshop to HTML. You could actually be using any image editor you want, but we're assuming that most of you are using Photoshop out there as the de facto image editing tool. And I've taught a lot of workshops in web design. I've taught a lot of one-day classes in Flash and Dreamweaver. And a common recurring theme that I've seen in people is they're really good designers. They know how to design things. They have great design comps. And not to malign anyone from any certain age group, but more often than not, the people that I'm finding are who are over 40, who learned how to design perhaps 15 years ago, they kind of missed out on the whole web thing. And they're seeing that they've got a lot of potential clients who they're losing business to because they're doing great print work for them. Then the client is saying, can you also design a web page for me? And either they're saying, no, I can't do that because I don't do web pages, or they've gotten themselves into a situation where they say, of course I can do that. And they're designing things in Photoshop, and they're working with a developer who's turning that into functioning pages. There's nothing wrong with working that way, but as the marketplace becomes leaner, as things become more competitive, in a certain sense, you're you're not as viable, you're not as competitive if you can't turn those Photoshop comps into web pages yourself. And I've seen a lot of people who are in this position and they say, you know, I could just, if only I knew how to turn that PSD comp, I know how to design for the web, I understand all the principles and limitations and challenges, if I could just get it into HTML myself, I could take one more person out of the equation, I could speed up my workflow, I could get more business, I could stop turning down jobs. So what we're talking about here is turning our design concepts into functioning web pages. And of course, if you're beginning with Photoshop, we kind of lied when we made up the title for this course. It sounded really catchy, so we kept it. We're not actually turning Photoshop into HTML. We need HTML, but what we're really doing here over the course of the five weeks is we're going to learn how to turn our Photoshop pages into HTML documents because it's the HTML document that actually gets viewed in the browser but the way it starts to look like something is through the use of CSS. So this isn't really an HTML class, it's a CSS class. And I tell people who are just getting started in web design now, if you're going to learn one thing, don't spend a lot of time learning HTML. The HTML is out there. You, know, you need to know how it works. You need to be able to recognize its structure, but memorizing every tag is not a good use of your time. If you want to start building web pages and getting work as an interactive designer, the key skill that you need to learn is CSS. And of course the tool that we're going to be doing this in is Dreamweaver. So the real focus of this class is going from Photoshop, taking a Photoshop file, slicing it up into separate images, then creating an HTML doc, and then using cascading style sheets to make it look exactly, well we say almost exactly, like the original PSD file. I think the rule of thumb for designers, we like to promise, um, or web designers, we like to promise that we're going to get pixel perfect precision to the original Photoshop comp. I'm going to set the bar a little lower and aim for about 98% precision because sometimes we have to make some compromises along the way. So what are we going to be learning or what do you need to be familiar with or getting re-familiar with if you want to be taking this course? The core concepts we're talking about are the separation of presentation and content. Before you go any further in your web design studies, make it be clear that you understand the separation of presentation and content. When I'm referring to these two things, I'm really saying that CSS is the presentation and HTML is the content. We're also going to be talking a lot about semantic markup. When we talk about building a web page, it means using the right tag for the right reason. That means, in, means using tags like H1, H2, paragraph tags, the UL tag or unordered lists, anchor tags, and so forth. Do you need to know how to write all these tags? Not really. Dream, Dreamweaver is going to write most of these tags for you. You just need to recognize them and know when to use the right tag in the right place. Another important thing that we'll be going over is the CSS box model. You cannot go anywhere without understanding the CSS box model. And we're talking about using margin and padding. Make sure you understand the difference between those two, but Turning your HTML document into a functioning web page that looks a lot like that Photoshop comp will be dependent on using the CSS box model. We can't forget about using lists for navigation, the, the UL tag and the LI tags. Because when you talk about making a website, when we talk about semantic markup, when we talk about using logic and order, and we talk about building our site for searchability or to respond to search engines, 
what better way to make your navigation bar than to make a list of the entire contents of the site? So best practices in web design means you might, have think, you might be thinking that you've built a nav bar in Photoshop, but when you get into Dreamweaver and CSS and HTML, that needs to be an unordered list, which is populated by list items. Most pe many people confuse those two, the UL tag and the LI tag. I will be going over those points repeatedly till they're clear. And you can't build a web page these days without using div tags for layouts. If you're still in the world of table-based web design, it's time to just stop using tables for layout. Only use tables for displaying tabular data. Control your page layout with div tags. And you're going to need to be familiar with the concept of floats and positioning to control that layout. So if many of you are thinking, oh no, this is over my head, I can't possibly remember this, don't worry. The five weeks that we're going to be doing this, the exercise files that I've built, I've structured based on the principle of repetition. We're going to be approaching these concepts every week, getting a little more difficult and complex with each week. So if it sounds completely foreign, don't worry, we're going to start small and build up. And we can't forget about accessibility. Um, accessibility is really important in web design. While some people do it for socially conscious reasons or to make pages more accessible to everyone who could possibly be using the World Wide Web when we talk about ubiquity, the real reason you want to make accessible client pages accessible or the real reason you're going to want to tell your clients that we want to make our pages as accessible is that accessible pages get better search results. So we're going to strive to follow best practices, but I have a couple of disclaimers here because I can't possibly keep everyone happy. These projects are designed to work in all modern browsers. That means it's going to work in Internet Explorer 7, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, and Opera. Actually, I should say my goal is to make it work in all these modern browsers. I've only built the Photoshop documents so far. I have to come back to you in two weeks with five functioning HTML pages, and let's hope they work in all the different browsers. But now this is going to be like a pivotal moment in my career, the evolution of the Internet. I'm just going to say that IE6 equals bad. And what I'm saying to my clients right now is I don't develop for IE6 anymore. And I would encourage everyone to, so that we can all move the web forward is I want you all to tell your clients that you don't develop for IE6 anymore either. According to the latest W3C stats, IE6 usage statistics have now dropped under 10%, which still seems like a lot, but it was over 10% last fall. The th all we can do is we all have to work together and try to push this browser out of here. What I'm generally telling my clients these days is if they want it to work in IE6, this is going to take me 20% more time, and it's going to cost 20% more. So just add that on to your estimate in the beginning. Or another way to look at it is it's 20% less or 20% faster if we don't do it in IE6. One of the big opportunities for not having to develop an IE6, despite its own pesky box model, is I can use transparent ping files. So all modern browsers support transparent pings, which allows us to bring a lot more visual richness and a lot of different qu richer design quality to our Photoshop files and carry that over to our PSDs, uh, to our HTML and CSS. Another thing that I'm going to do, which isn't going to make everyone happy, is all my measurements are going to be in pixels and not in M's. So since we're also in the era of, era of the modern browser, I'm going to assume that all modern browsers scale proportionately Yes, I know that you can have text, si text zooming turned on or off, but the people who hit Command Plus and see their text zoom are going to see that zooming and breaking up their layout. They're going to be seeing that anyhow. So while best practices would be to say to design in M's so that we can meet accessibility requirements, the class goes a lot more quickly when we have to do the math in pixels than in M's. It's not a perfect solution, but most of you, if you're getting started in web design now, you're probably not building, you, your best work is still 12 or 18 months from now, and the web is moving forward and changing so quickly, it's time to be forward thinking and thinking only in pixels and not necessarily working in M's. So the accessibility, usability, and SEO purists will not always be happy with the solutions that I've taken. Some people say, you know, well, that's totally black hat, that's not best for SEO, and that's not best for usability, and that's not best for accessibility. There's a lot of people we're going to try to keep happy here, but I'm focusing mostly on designers. Designers want to make things look good, and they want to keep their clients happy, and they want to get the project done in a certain amount of time. So my goal on all of these is to try to find, follow the Buddhist principle of 
the middle way. We can't take the high road, we can't take the low road, but we'll try to follow as many best practices as possible. We'll try to make pages which are W3C compliant for our XHTML and our CSS, and we'll try to make pages which look really good in the browser. So the other thing that I'm doing, which is perhaps forward thinking, is most of these projects are designed for a width of 960 pixels. So 960 is the new minimum for your resolution because W3C stats are saying that 96% of users now have a resolution of 1024 by 768 or larger. Although while I, I advocate this, it is ironic that I just had a client last week and I struggled and I wrestled with him. I could not get him to go wider than 800 pixels. 800 by 600 is what he wants, wanted because he said, I don't want to have to do a little scrolling. They don't want to have to do any scrolling. So some people might still be reluctant, but I'm going to encourage everyone to go 960 wide or even wider. The reason that most of these, or some of these, at least in the beginning, our first exercises are 720 pixels tall, is that what fits best in our video format. Since my resolution for my screen is over only 720, I'm not going to try to make Photoshop files which are much taller than that, so we can see the whole thing in, in the video at one time. However, for those of you who are currently designing web pages, I would encourage you to not be limited by that. I think it's also time to go below the fold or beneath the fold. Although there are usability tests which say that users won't see content which is below the fold, it is my opinion now that everybody knows how to scroll. If you look at the New York Times, if you look at ESPN, if you looked at contemporary news sites, many sites have a lot of content below that 720, 720 pixel barrier. So feel free to make your layouts larger. I was reading a good article from Jacob Nielsen this morning, um, his usability, um, what is it, Use It, the website Use It, his usability alerts that said, if the content is good, if you have something really important at the bottom, people will scroll down to it. But if you fill it up with fluff, it's going to get ignored. And another trend that I'm going to be using is really large background images. As more and more of us get bigger monitors with bigger resolution, more and more web pages are using that real estate behind the web page. And as more and more people have a higher bandwidth connection, we're seeing large image files, large file sizes. We're seeing much more visually rich background images. So feel free to use that space outside your page. And another thing which I'm going to be showing you is uh, consider using a grid system. There's a lot of free templates out there like what you can find at 960.gs that help you lay out your page on a grid of 960 pixels wide. So as I was getting ready for this class, I started looking into design trends. I, went, I wanted to see what's really happening in web design out there right now. It's so over overwhelming. There's so many different things happening. They're getting visually richer. They're getting more complex. So I went to a couple of CSS galleries. You might be familiar with these, such as CSS Vault and CSS Beauty. These are user-submitted galleries that have all the latest and greatest trends in web design. And I literally looked at over 200 web pages and took screenshots to sort of see what's happening in web design today. What are the trends? What is the state of the art? What should we be doing? If we're teaching how to make web pages, we should be really looking at the best web pages out there. What I'm seeing is, more rich textures, more gradients, more lighting effects. I'm seeing more drop shadows, more illusions of 3D space. What I'm seeing is, especially through the use of ping files, I'm seeing all the great tricks that you can see in Photoshop, and I'm seeing that being applied successfully into web pages. Three, four, five years ago, things were a lot flatter. File sizes were smaller. Ping transparency wasn't really, really an option. Things just, the web of four or five years ago looked dull in comparison. So everything is getting richer, and these Photoshop concepts are getting transferred successfully into HTML and CSS. I'm also seeing more assertive typography, and one of the things we're going to do in uh, our fifth exercise is go beyond web-safe fonts. So it's a really exciting time, I think, in terms of design trends, especially in terms of interactivity. I'm seeing, especially with jQuery, everyone wants something flashy. And 18 months ago, that meant flash. But there are so many more options out, now, out there right now, particularly what you can do with jQuery. If you haven't heard of jQuery, it's time to start reading the design blogs because it's everywhere on the web right now. Matter of fact, even on the Creative Live website right now, we've got an image slideshow rotator, which I bet is being done with jQuery. If you've been watching slideshows, if you've been watching a lot of the new interactivity that's happening in web design right now, it's probably being done with jQuery. What is jQuery, you're, probably, you're asking? That is a compact JavaScript framework that allows dynamic animation to be added to your web page. 
Now, if you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, you, you lost me at HTML and CSS. I didn't want to learn how to write any JavaScript. Don't worry about it. There's not a whole lot of jQuery you need to write. We're just going to be cutting and pasting some code. You just need to know how to implement the web development that someone else has done and know how to put that into your HTML document so you've got some interactivity and bring it to life because everybody's asking for something interactive these days.